Hello everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of Eye of the Dragon, Cruel and Beautiful Rabbit Hole, Lauren Frey, and the upcoming Jaw of the Dragon. So I've previously made a video talking about Fire Emblem Gage and how, like, pretendos are insisting it's been censored. You know, I've kind of disputed these claims already. Now let's talk a little bit about the situation in regards to, like, what's actually happening. Because this really has nothing to do with the game itself, it has nothing to do with the franchise, it has nothing to do with uh, Nintendo of America or localization. This is yet another method for Pretendos to go after Nintendo. They'll throw everything at the wall until uh, until something sticks. So, you know, where people like RGT85 will will try and come out and say that, like, oh, we're getting we're getting too many in Xenoblade and Fire Emblem games from intelligent systems and Monolith Soft. They should they should try to make something else. That is an example of him trying to fabricate an issue out of whole cloth, right? He is trying to complain about something that does not matter at all, right? And that's kind of what we're seeing with this uh, censorship thing, these censorship allegations, because according to these people, you know, the, the people uh, currently complaining about Fire Emblem Engage and uh, its localization, according to them, Nintendo of America is the single worst localization company in the industry, yeah, forget Xseed, forget 8.4, forget, like, any of these other, like, companies, like, Nintendo is the absolute worst, bar none, and they won't explain to you why, they won't give examples, they won't give, like, titles that were, like, heavily censored by Nintendo of America, you're just supposed to, like, buy into this theory that, like, NOA is so deeply entrenched in SJW culture that they're taking away your anime titties just because they can. There's no reason for it. There's there's uh, there's no justification. They're just doing it because they hate gamers. They're so woke. They have to lash out against gamer culture for 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 any reason whatsoever, by any means necessary, essentially. And of course, this is like a load of crap. This is this is something I've talked about like several times over the years, especially in, like, 2016, which I think was, like, the peak of this, like, uh, censorship debacle in which people were pretending that, like, Fatal Frame 5 was ruined, uh, Tokyo MRI Sessions was ruined, uh, Fire Emblem Fates was ruined in the localiza localization. There was, like, a very big push up until, like, Breath of the Wild come out came out to try and, like, pretend Nintendo had, like, become so woke that they were censoring all the games. They were seizing control of the Japanese studios and, like, censoring these games before they even came out. You know, pre-censorship, they called it, which is uh, the most... The the most idiotic thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> like, like pre-censorship, really? Like, uh, you, you have all these, like, excuses and justifications and, like, a uh, weird rational rationalizing about the situation, right? Like, for example... Uh, these guys will try and claim that they're the reason that Tokyo Mirage Sessions failed. The fan base was so upset at Tokyo Mirage Sessions. They didn't buy the game because it was censored. Yeah, forget the fact that it was, like, a niche RPG on the Wii U, of all things. Forget, like, how fringe it was to have, like, a Japanese idol-themed RPG on a Nintendo console. Like, forget that this game you know, was one of the last games to come out on Wii U. Like, let's let's pretend that the game had issues because of of the censorship. Like, let's let's pretend it's all about the censorship. And it's it's weird, like how much these guys have obsessed over the the rather rather minimal changes and adjustments to Tokyo Mirage Sessions over the years. Like, it is weird how this game keeps getting brought up, like uh, seven years down the line. You know, as being like an example of like peak Nintendo censorship when when in reality, like what one dungeon was changed, a couple of outfits were changed like it, it really wasn't that big of a deal, honestly, you know, just like Fatal Frame 5, just like just like what they changed with Fire of the Fates, like the things the thing is, uh, these guys exaggerate so much. They cry wolf so many times that nobody really takes them seriously anymore. And I think after that 2016 period where this stuff like kind of really like peaked in popularity, there's been a really sharp drop off. Now, there are a number of purists who will still like stand by 
like this idea that Nintendo of America is like a plague on Japanese gaming. But I think most people are are beginning to kind of realize that this entire debacle is just is just silly. Like it doesn't make any sense. The the complaints are nonsensical. It's just a bunch of nerds spurging out over like literal literally nothing. You know, like there's no real problem with Fire Emblem Engage from what I've seen. But these guys are going to like swear by this until they get debunked, all right? Until the game comes out and people, like, start getting into the game. Like, they're going to continue their allegations that the game has been completely censored and it's been completely ruined by those evil SJWs. And I've I've talked about this a little bit uh, recently, actually, in my Nintendo is not woke video. And I, I think it really needs to be called out more. Because right now, uh, looking at Fire Emblem Engage... It's weird to see, like, these people try and pretend that, like, stuff like Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was censored, or that, like, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was censored, or that, like, any of these other Nintendo... Nintendo has a problem with, with, with like, skin in games, you know? Like, it's, it's obviously not true. It is observably not true in a, in a wide range of ways. And, but, like, the stereotype has been, like really promoted a lot in the past couple of days, uh, past couple of years. Uh, I'm aware of recently that a, a, porn, a porn game that was released on Switch, like, uh, pulled its release date for a couple of weeks because, oh, Nintendo got our game removed when it was just... Uh, the claim was that, like, Nintendo removed the game for being too sexualized, but what actually happened was that they pulled a marketing stunt, and Nintendo themselves did not do shit. That is... That is essentially what we're dealing with here, is like outdated stereotypes from the 90s, that Nintendo was censorship happy, that Nintendo was doing this or that, or like ruining video games, when in reality, there's nothing all that weird or unusual about what they do, honestly. Like, you see this with any other localization company, it's not all that usual. It's industry standard, it's to be expected. There's nothing all that weird about different versions of games being slightly different.